Hello, my name is Derek Atkins, and this is Saints and Sinners, where we dive into the Bible to see what God has to say to us in today's world. In this video, I'm taking a very short break from the series that I've been doing on the Gospel of John. The reason I'm taking this break is because recently I've been wrestling with a question that I'm sure many of you have either wondered, asked, or wrestled with at some point in time. And that question is, will my pet go to heaven? A few months ago, my family adopted a wonderful cat named Ben Ben. We enjoyed having him in our home, but he was recently diagnosed with kidney failure and is not responding at all to treatment. He has now lost interest in eating and has even lost interest in grooming himself. This means that Ben Ben will likely die soon. Because of this situation, I've been thinking about the question of what will happen to Ben Ben after he passes from this world. Will he go to heaven? Many pet owners talk about their deceased pet crossing the rainbow bridge. But how accurate is this kind of thinking? Instead of looking to popular ideas about what happens to our pet after they die, we need to look at what the Bible says on this topic. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So what does the Bible say about what happens to our pet after they die? Will our pet go to heaven? The first thing we can say about our pets is that they are created by God. In the creation account in Genesis, we read of how God created the fish of the seas, the birds of the air, and all the creatures that roam on the land. Genesis 1, 24, verses 24 and 25 reads, and God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild creatures, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kind, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. So we see that God created all animals, including our pets. What's more, our pets are part of God's good creation. The second thing we can say about our pets is that God cares for our pets. In the biblical account of the great flood, God commanded Noah to build an ark to take on board two of every kind of animal, plus seven of every kind of bird and seven of every clean animal. Then in Genesis 8, 1, we read of how after the waters covered the earth, God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. In addition, in Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 11, we read of how God establishes a covenant, not only with Noah and his family, but also a covenant with all the animals of the earth. In this covenant, God promised to never again destroy all life, including all animals, by flood. So in the account of the great flood, we see how God demonstrated his care for all animals on earth. 
Elsewhere, the Bible speaks of God's care for his creatures. In Psalm 104, verse 15, we read, These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. Now, Psalm 104 speaks of how God sustains his creation and cares for all that he has made, including plants, animals, and people. So the these in verse 15 of Psalm 104 refers specifically to animals. And then in Matthew 6.26, Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Now, this verse in Matthew is set within the context of Jesus' teaching about not worrying, but here Jesus does affirm that God cares for the birds of the air, and by extension, Jesus affirmed that God cares for all other animals. So we see that God cares for all the animals he has created. However, animals, like humans, experience suffering. Romans 8, verses 20 and 21 speaks of this reality. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Like us, animals also suffer injuries, disease, and ultimately death. All of this suffering exists because Adam and Eve disobeyed God while they were in the Garden of Eden, which brought sin into the world. Since then, sin has corrupted creation itself, including the animal kingdom. The good news is that one day Jesus will return and he will restore our world to what it was before the fall. What's more, the Bible speaks of animals living in this restored world. In Isaiah 11:6, we read, The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion, and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. This means that animals will be in heaven, and they, together with all the redeemed of humankind, will no longer suffer from the penalty of sin. Suffering, sickness, and death will be no more. So, let's summarize what we've discovered so far. We see that God created animals, that God cared for animals, that God promises to end the illnesses and death that animals suffer because of the presence of sin in this fallen world, and that there will be animals in God's restored creation after Jesus returns. But we still haven't answered the key question that many of you have. Will my pet go to heaven? Let's dig a little deeper into the Bible to see if we can find an answer to this question. To answer this question, we first need to answer the question, what is the difference between animals and humans? Evolution claims that the only difference between animals and humans is that humans are simply more complex more highly evolved animals with greater intelligence. But the Bible has a different understanding of the difference between animals and humans. According to the Bible, the key difference between animals and humans is that humans are created in the image of God, while animals are not. Only humans are capable of having a spiritual relationship with God, 
and only humans have the ability to make moral choices. Animals live by instinct and do not have the ability to have the kind of relationship with God that we humans do. As far as we can tell, the Bible doesn't teach that animals have eternal souls like humans. Therefore, we cannot say whether our pets have eternal life, nor can we say whether our pets will be in heaven or not. I know this is not the answer that many of you want to hear, but if we hold to sound theology, we must follow what the Bible says and not what the world around us says, not even what our own hearts wish for. Still, there are a number of things that we can affirm about our pet based upon the, what the Bible says. We know that God created all creatures, including our pets. We know that God cares for all animals, including our pets. And we know that all good gifts come from God, including the gift of pets. God, in his providence, has given, given many of us wonderful pets whom we love dearly so that we can take care of them and provide them with loving homes. In turn, our pets often give us unconditional love, a special kind of love that we rarely experience anyplace else. God, in his goodness, often gives us pets so that we may learn how to love other creatures and ultimately learn how to love other people. So he gives us pets so that we may learn how to love other people better and thereby become more and more like Christ in our lives. So we can give thanks to God for giving us the good gift of pets. We can pray for God to protect and keep them safe as they explore the world around them. And we can pray that God will heal them when they are sick. So as we care for our pets, let us live with gratitude for the good gift of pets and let us love our pets so that we may better love God and other people. In my next video, we will return to our, our series on the Gospel of John. And in my next video, I'll look at how Jesus called his first disciples to follow him. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe, the, um, the like button. If you want to receive more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, please write your comments in the section below. Until next time, may God bless all of you abundantly.